end of every single video. You can also buy me a coffee. The link to that is in the description as well. Just letting you guys know and self-promo out of the way for now. It's actually so warm. I'm pre-filming and like the sun is shining in. I really have to start doing these videos earlier. Now the sun is rising earlier. It's only ten, quarter past ten and I'm on my second one and I've already, you know, like I've made my brekkie as well. Um, not that big but I'm gonna do a workout. I don't know when I'm gonna do the workout. So I don't wanna eat like a huge meal or anything like that. Like a smoothie because maybe it's annoying, but I like to sip on the smoothie in the video, etc. Um, just to, you know, eat a little bit at the same time. So um I'm back today with an Am I the Asshole video for you guys. So yeah. I'm just gonna read some Am I the Asshole. I'm not doing all of them today because when I do like the no sleep let's not meet all that. It takes over an hour to do, so I'm just going to do like a 40 minute video and just do I'm on the asshole. So I'm not going to do 20 minutes of each, etc. This also always ends up taking longer because I do 20 minutes of each and that's not including the intro of the same delays. I have to finish a store before I get on to the next one, so it ends up being like a, nearly an hour 10, etc. That's quite long for today. So I actually, disclaimer, I have read this one yesterday. Like, these aren't I probably could go on the Am I the Asshole thread and get newer ones, but it doesn't really matter. I opened these yesterday because I had intended to do this video yesterday, but I didn't end up doing it because it was getting light, etc. So, uh, the first one is, so I did read this one actually. Uh, Am I the Asshole for telling my boyfriend to stop eating so much? And at first I thought it was like a weight thing in the title for eating so much, but it's specific. It's specific to the situation, so you have to hear about the situation. So, this is, this is a stupid fight, honestly, but Reddit, do your thing. So, some backstory. So, during my 28 male undergrad years, my parents paid for my grocery bills because they are really, because they really, rightfully so, believe that good food is important to a student's health, which, yes, it's good to nourish your body for it to perform at its best, um, you know, academically and just in general. And then they said, I know my parents are awesome. They never set a monthly limit down which I could spend, but I was really frugal and never went over a $200 limit I imposed on myself. And reading about the states and all of them, I'm not sure which city this is in. I think that's actually quite low because 200 it's only one person puts $200 for the whole month, not just a week. It's not a week or anything, it's a month. So like $50 a week, etc. Um, now I'm I limit, I post myself, now I'm back in grad school for my master's and my parents are covering again. I know I'm an adult with a few years of work under my belt now, but not having to worry about groceries let me ship at uh, lets me chip at rent and loans and other bills without losing sleep. So the parents are helping them out even though they don't need to, out of the goodness of their hearts, etc. with groceries. So I'm back on my extremely frugal way of eating and meal planning because I'm not going to take advantage of my parents' generosity. So maybe when they were working, they had a more generous budget since they had more, more money to spare. But now that they are back on a student, uh, they're back on a student budget basically. So my 27 male boyfriend, however, basically inhales all my food every time he's over. So like eating all my snacks and legit every frozen meal, all the meat, one time he even ate the other half of a cheese I had already bit into. It's a question mark. Um, etc. So he's basically wolfing down my dinner and lunch. It's forced me to open my own wallet to accommodate him because I'm not going to send my parents a suddenly huge grocery bill. I'm seriously messing up my finances. I plan basically down to the dollar. So, especially because I guess I'm saying about the estates being expensive. I think like that is quite a, a frugal budget for the area or the states or, I mean, I, I know it. Uh, well, things cost very all across the states, but still, it's quite frugal. Um, I, I'm not sure if it would be as frugal here for groceries. It depends on where you shop. Like, if you go to Aldi, 50 euro for one person will be quite a lot, but it depends on what grocery store, etc. I'm sure they could drop it in the shop in a cheap one. So, we got into arguments, and his side is basically my parents are gonna cover anyway, so I need to stop spending my own money and not worry so much. And when I go over to his house, I eat his food too, but I don't eat as much as he does. So, my arguments are just because my parents are covering it doesn't mean he can eat anything he wants. He legit eats my whole fridge. I'm not even joking. The only thing he leaves are the vegetables, and he could eat less. When we go out, he often has leftovers, so I eat everything at my place. I banned him from cooking and using the raw ingredients at my place. I'm only giving him my small stash of snacks when he comes over, and after the third time, he's not talking to me. Honestly, this is such a stupid fight, but if I'm the asshole, I'll apologize. So, I'm gonna have a sip of my smoothie. So I have already read the comments.
comments on this make a lot of them are saying that they're not the asshole they have to have a talk with their boyfriend because um yeah so one person says just start with i am really grateful my parents are helping me i'm not going to abuse that i don't want this to be a big deal and i want you to be able to eat enough while you're over but i am pension about um however, however much dollars more they're spending per week over when it's just me you to contribute with funds or grocery shopping that increased cost for groceries at mine includes what what i when i eat at yours so that should be fair can you help me out because i really can't afford spending that much and i think if not more time at his place eating at more meals and someone says the op says that like, that's what like that's what i feel but i just want to express it verbally and someone simply said my parents agreed to cover groceries for me not me and you like straight to the point you know um i don't think they're trying to take advantage of it but maybe they are kind of a bit like maybe they're struggling money wise so they come over to your place more to like eat and um, because they know um you'll replace it or that your parents are paying for it so they don't think that it's a big deal etc but they are covering the difference they don't want their parents to pay a lot and also even the parents were paying for that you know uh, it's their parents for them not for the boyfriend so is that true but yeah and also maybe they just don't it could be like they don't really realize how much they're eating at least at first if you're hungry sometimes you just eat until you're full you don't really realize if it's a lot of food or not i don't know like when i meal prep but this is when i meal prep it lasts a while like my dad always comments like oh that's a lot of food or da, 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 for but like it lasts me a good few meals you know and i think people that don't cook don't realize as much like my dad basically never cooks and he doesn't realize that um well, obviously he does realize, but it's, it's really annoying to cook for yourself all the time. You just want like a meal, a balanced meal, quick, especially after your workout, etc. So I, it's really helpful to have the meal prep and all. Like, I can just take it into a healthy meal right after my workout. No prep required. Well, prep is required, but no prep on that day. So in the first day, sometimes that seems like a lot of work to prepare it. But I'm like, oh, it took so long. But now on the next few days, it's going to last me a good few days. So I'm like, oh. Yes, um, I thought it well. I'm so grateful that I did this past me. Your future self is thankful for your past self, uh, perhaps for you. So, yeah, people are saying the pers uh, the boyfriend is the asshole. We have to talk to him um, because they're going to take advantage of your you and your parents, etc. So, this one I didn't read yet. I mean, the rest I don't think I read yet. So, am I the asshole for leaving my sister's bridal party after she told me my dad's girlfriend is the maid of honor? So, I'm gonna have a sip of my smoothie. For context, when I, 32 female, was a teen, my parents ended up getting divorced. My mom got full custody because my dad said he needed time off. I see he couldn't take care of us when everything was still raw. I mean, what about the mom? <laughs> but yeah, when he was around, he spent most of his time with my sister, uh, Maria, 25 female, rather than me as she needed him more, maybe because she was younger. This was a sore spot for me growing up, especially when he made an effort for Maria, but he never but never for me. He has tried to reconcile, and while we we aren't on the best of terms, I've grown to accept it. He ended up meeting Jane, 57 female, at a bar, and they hit it off while I personally don't mind him moving on. Jane was obsessed with the idea of reconciling our relationship. The few times I've met her, she would get into arguments with me, claiming that my dad only wants his daughter back and to give him a chance. Last summer, we were having a dinner at Maria's flat where she and dad were discussing upcoming family vacation. When Jane asked what I thought about the trip, I informed her I wasn't going. She immediately started questioning me about it. Suffice to say, it ended up a scream match as she claimed I was purposely icing her and my dad out. I told her I was a grown adult and if she didn't like it, she had someone else following her like a puppy. My dad got involved. 
paused and I uh, ended up choosing to leave. But not before she shouted that I was mom's lap dog, Maria ended up kicking them both um, afterwards to out, both out afterwards to um, I haven't spoken to either my dad or Jane since that day with Maria's upcoming wedding. I expected to see them there and I made my peace to just stay as far as possible. But a few days ago, she told me she had a maid of honor in mind. She claimed Jane to be nothing but sweet to her and that she felt like she was her close friend. As she was talking, she said Jane was really sorry and was trying to reach out to apologize. But I cut her off. I told her if she wanted her as a maid of honor, it was her wedding and choice. But I personally didn't want to be in a position where I'd have to keep interacting with her over every little detail. I would still attend the wedding, but I wouldn't be a bridesmaid. This made her tear up. She begged me to reconsider as she really wanted me, be, me to be a part of her big day. I told her I will, but just as attendee. In the end, she said it's okay, but asked me to reconsider. News got to my dad and Jane. Now my dad has sent several messages telling me that I'm acting self childish and I'm ruining Maria's day. Am I the asshole for leaving? I feel like this way we can avoid any potential conflict, but I want to be a part of her big day. But I also want to be a part of her big day. When I first read the title, I kind of thought, um, she was salty that uh, Jane was the maid of honor um, instead of her. But it just seems that she doesn't want to interact a lot with Jane as a bridesmaid because, um, you know, I have I haven't experienced really with weddings much. But, you know, the maid of honor kind of organizes most of things and the bridesmaids, they all organize things together. The maid of honor has the main role. But um, so they have to spend a lot of time planning things like they plan the baby shower together for the bride, etc. So they have to spend time together, etc. That's not just the wedding. Um, it says to the comment that got deleted that called you an asshole and told you to grow up. Uh, frankly, I disagree. If she had demanded something like, if Jane is made of honor, then I'll never talk to you again. Or gasp, how dare you invite Jane when you know we don't get along. Then yes, she would make it it about herself. What OP did was the right thing to do. While it's important to consider your beloved one's feelings, it's also important to respect your own boundaries and your own self-worth. And it's not like she's not going to try for, try for her sister either. She's still attending. OP was already in a no-contact with Jane and her dad, so obviously things were pretty bad. As OP described the time she had met Jane, it would uh, always develop into an argument. How in the world do you expect this to go over nicely when history shows otherwise? And it'll be all the more emotional since this is a wedding day, and two, they haven't seen each other for a long time. Her sister's wedding is not the place for stressful confrontations, if anything. I think it's somewhat weird the sister didn't see this coming, but whatever. And it says, um, 1.7 thousand likes to that. I find it weird that a 25 year old has a mother of honor as a 57 year old. I hope this is make me an ages but Jane apart from being nosy and Tristan is also her father's girlfriend. She already has a part in the wedding. And some people say I know men who have thought this is best man of crimson. So that's a bit like you know you could you could have I mean your mother or whoever has your maid of honor if you wanted, you know, but usually a uh, mother of the bride is, you know, they already get a seat at the what is it? Bridesmaids do as well. Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, you know. But I guess, um, you know, dad's girlfriend won't be the same as, you know, mother of the bride. It's different. But, yeah. A lot of people are saying, not the asshole. Yeah, so the next one is Am I the asshole for telling my brother that he's never allowed to be around my new girlfriend? So I, uh, male 19, and my older brother, male 22, both work at the same factory. And about five months ago, me and him became friends with a woman, a female 23, who works at the factory with us. So soon after we became friends with this woman, she lost her apartment, and since me and my brother both live in the same house, we told her that she could live with us. I've never had feelings for this woman, but her and my brother had decided to go out a few times. They were never exclusive. 
exclusive, but they were well on their way to being exclusive. They were just taken thin slow. While him and this woman were going out, but not exclusive, me and him became friends with a woman, a female 20. I expressed feelings for this woman, my brother, very well knew that. Soon after we became friends with this woman, he asked her out, knowing full well that I liked her. And soon after, they became exclusive, and he completely left behind the woman that we met at the factory. He screwed over the factory woman bad because he told her that he could possibly see a future with her. But when he met the other woman, he left her behind and never talked to her again. This is not the first time he has made a move on a woman that he knew I had feelings for. He has done this two times in the past, and every time he does it, they start dating. I thought it was just a two-time thing, but now with the most recent event happening, I'm starting to think that he does it on purpose. Just recently, we were talking, and I mentioned that I had gotten a new girlfriend. He got excited, and I was very eager. I was very eager to meet her. I informed him that he would not be meeting her, nor would I bring him around her. He got confused and asked me why. I reminded him that he had dated three women in the past that I have feelings for, that, and that I. I know that he does it on purpose. He then started crying and telling me that it hurts them that I would say that about him. I simply got up and walked away. The thing that convinced me that he does it on purpose the fact that he was very close to being exclusive with that factory woman, but he broke her heart and left her for the woman that I developed feelings for. The reason I will never bring him around my new girlfriend is not because I'm insecure that she will leave me for him, but I fear that we will make a move on her and that it's not only disrespectful, but I know it will make her uncomfortable. And him have always had a rivalry, and he has always tried to prove that he's better than me. Am I just trying to put a stop to it because, and I'm just trying to put a stop to it because you're both adults, and he needs to start acting like it. So am I the asshole? And this post has got three thousand three hundred likes. It's like not that. It's like a really popular thread. There's like fifteen million, fifteen point seven million, I think, believing following the Am I the Asshole thread, the original or the one that called Am I the Asshole. But surprisingly enough, it's not actually A I T A, it's the words I'm the asshole. But um I put A I T A in the in the dial just because it's quicker. But yeah. It says not the asshole. Um I have known people like your brother for some reason it was the challenge. And for others it was an ego boost. Once you know your girlfriend better, tell her about your brother and then bring her around. At least she'll be prepared if he tries anything. You shouldn't have to keep a person away from your home like that. Oh yeah, because they do live together, don't they? So that must be very hard for the brother who's dating her because, I mean, what, he can't bring her home with him. It's impossible to steal someone, but people are making choices when it happens. Remember that. I mean, yeah, I'm not defending the brother. I mean, it could be possible that, like, he fell for the other girl. You know, he fell in love with the other girl. Even if the brother had feelings for her, um, so um, the other woman didn't like. <laughs> there, there wasn't. A, he expressed feelings to his brother for the other woman, but um, um, not to her. Maybe so. Maybe she didn't know that. It's not like she chose the brother over him. Like, you know, maybe someone asks you out and you just accept. You know, and you start to like them, etc. Maybe she only thought of the other brother as friends, etc. So, like, he, I mean, it's hard because I wouldn't say he has a claim on a woman just because he likes her. Some people, some guys think that, that they can, like, you know, uh, I, I got there first, etc. But, like, I guess it's the bro code. Like, yeah, the woman may not like um, the, the brother that likes her. But um, if she likes the other one, maybe the, the bro coach should say that the other brother shouldn't make a move because he knows that his brother likes her, even if she doesn't like him. But yeah, you can't really like claim someone, but still, um, it's valid, yeah. But then again, even if you did bring your new girlfriend around to her and your brother, if you or she suddenly left you for your brother, it wouldn't just be your brother's fault as well. It would be shitty of your brother. But it would, you know, as per someone said, it's two people that make that, you know. So, yeah. Um, okay, I saw this one yesterday, but it said this post it was deleted by the person who originally posted it. I did 
So next up, we have, am I the asshole for throwing a tantrum in my birthday event because I was sidelined? Friend, female, uh, 30. I considered her a good friend, but a couple of incidents have left me questioning the reality of this friendship. She is friends with both my husband and I. One incident was my husband's B-Day. We specifically asked to back out the party soon because we had major events the next day and asked her to leave when she started getting cozy with my husband's guy friend. She continued and stayed um, at our place till 4 to 5 in the morning. I'd offered to drop her home or set up the room for her but I had requested um, to stop playing the music as we were planning to sleep. She did not listen and continued and finally left after my husband sent her an angry message. We ended up being called slut shamers. She said she was drunk, so she is not to be blamed. Second, my birthday picnic. We had two cars, and as she would be uncomfortable sitting alone with a different couple, I offered to sit in the second car and asked her, her to join me. She said yes. This was despite the fact that I wanted to sit in my car with my husband and a couple other friends I am close to. Last minute, instead, she sat in my car with my husband and other friends. I felt abandoned and ended up being passive aggressive. She also brought alcohol without running um, by us, which was not part of the plan. My passive aggression continued, and to avoid lashing out, I physically distanced myself from her. But towards the end, I ended up saying something on the lines of, It's my birthday, and I'm being sidelined, and not in a good tone. When we spoke later, after a few days of no talking, she called me juvenile, toxic, delusional, etc. Said I have disrespected her. I apologize and explained why I reacted the way I did, which, as per her, are not valid reasons. Also, she feels that my husband should have checked in with her and owes her this as a friend. I explained to her that these situations also seep in our marriage. We even have issues of our own. Thus, the distance she didn't agree and called us immature and unfair. She kept on calling her. Uh, POV as the objective reality in my POV as delusional, juvenile, and toxic. I'm at the asshole here. And was I actually being juvenile or am I being gaslighted? Uh, 1,600 uh, likes on the post. Um, you didn't throw a tantrum and she sounds like a bit of a narc and she strikes back way too hard and doesn't have the decency to apologize for rude behavior because she was drunk. You know what I do when I behave like a jack host because I was drunk? I feel ashamed. Apologize and I don't get as drunk anytime soon. And she should be ashamed uh, about, and because she isn't, she should be shamed. Behavior like hers only enabled by, bo by people be being too moral to shame and raise children like her. Part of me wonders if the friend is interested in the husband and jealous of OP, someone says. But, um, let's see. People are saying she's not the assholes because, um, yeah, the first friend is totally not cool. She said that they had stuff to do the next day and it's their house. Um, she gave all the options she offered her. She offered her to stay over, etc. Make up the room for her but before they went to bed, etc even drive her home but she just kept like playing the music or something in their house like a what and the second one like what like she your the, the, the OP is making a uh, like compromise or whatever like doing something they don't want to do on like their birthday as well um and like why would you be uncomfortable in it with another couple in the car it's only a car ride like it's not like you know, maybe they'd just be like a third wheeling, but it's a car ride. It's not like you're third wheeling their day, you know? And so just when, I guess I assume there was no space in the other car, when Obi goes to that car with the couple to keep the other, the woman, the friend, whatever, company, she just takes her place in the other car with her husband and her closer friends on her own birthday. Like, what is this? No. Um, I think we should be grateful um, that that the OP came to the car with you and not like just use it. That was planned. Like she just wanted space in the other car, but she couldn't say, you know, I want to go in the other car. So I don't know, honestly. So the next one is, am I the asshole for calling out my stepdad's parents for how they talk about me and telling them they should be more honest around my mom and their son? So sorry if the title doesn't make sense. I'll do my best to clear it up. I, 17 female, have a blended family. My mom brought me and my two half siblings, 10 and 8, into her marriage with Mark two years ago. Mark also has two kids. Um, when they met, my younger 
siblings and my step siblings call Mark and my mom, mom and dad. My step my step siblings mom is only sort of present in their lives. She lives in another state and doesn't really keep touch with them often. They can sometimes go over a year without seeing or hearing from her. They don't remember her being more present. So to them, my mom is their mom. My siblings feel the same way about uh, Mark because they don't remember their dad. I was 12. My mom and Mark met 13 when I met Mark and 15 when they got married because of my age and being used to not having a dad. I never saw Mark um, as my dad. I don't call him dad. I don't introduce him as my dad either. Mark doesn't care. We have a good and solid relationship, but it's different to the one he has with my younger siblings and step-siblings. My mom also doesn't care and she was really instrumental in everything being open and clear to both Mark and me. Um, when they were dating and figuring out how to blend things. Um, Mark's parents do not like me. Um, they hide it incredibly well. Like they have never said anything or shown this directly when my mom, Mark, or I are around. I was helping Mark with some errands recently and I met someone from his parents' church who scolded me out of nowhere. It really took me by surprise because I had seen this person twice, maybe, and I didn't even know their name. Mark doesn't either, but she recognized me and she told me it was disgusting how I treat Mark. I was so shocked. She told me I wasn't, it wasn't a surprising thing. Mark parents didn't like being around me and found my attitude repulsive. She walked away before I could ask any questions. A couple of weeks after that, I saw Mark's parents out running their own errands and heard them talk to someone else about how awful I was. They accused me of disrespecting Mark and they said I was a teenage terror who was out to make everyone's life hell. They made some wild accusations. Then that weekend they were over at our house acting totally normal. Mark's mom gave my brother her phone and he saw contact saved under like a evil like a devil kind of thing with purple. I called the phone and sure enough it was me. This is when I spoke up and I called out Mark's parents for how they talked about me and I told them they should be more honest around us about what they really they think of me really. Mark asked me what was going on. I told him about their church friend, what I heard um, them say about me. Mark was furious with his parents but they were furious that I didn't stay quiet because they're allowed to find it disgusting and rude that I won't accept their son fully. Mark and my own mom kicked uh, them out but Mark's parents said I was staring shit at the asshole 1100 likes and yet this one's pretty obvious not the asshole they're creating drama from nowhere and you are defending yourself you seem to have a good relationship with Mark and he clearly has your back they are the asshole and I need to stop inventing stuff about you Attacking this comment to save respect for Mark for having your back and taking your side, sticking up for you against his parents. You may not have a dad daughter relationship, but it sounds like you're solid and there's a lot of respect there. It says, Yeah, it's a free on Reddit where a blended family works well together, communicates with one another, and posts here. Uh, your mother and Mark deserve credit for blending the families together as well as they have. Mark's parents are the assholes. They should be happy that everyone's living well with the new family. Yeah, uh, people, yeah, everyone kind of agrees, not the asshole, because, um, but, uh, yeah, someone says, unsurprised the ones getting their hate on our church friends. So, yeah, it seems like, um, you know, they're, for some reason, they're just bad mouthing the OP behind her back, just because she doesn't see Mark as a father figure, but it just seems like she is the oldest, as she said in the comment, kind of, I'm not sure how the age difference really I know her siblings are 10 and 8 while she is 17 but I'm not sure about um the Mark's other kids biological kids but what age they are but it seems to be younger like seems like she's the oldest so it's kind of just understandable you know uh, if you've known your dad or you've you know have, or got used to not having a dad in the same way way you might not like see um, a stepdad as a father figure in the same way as if you know he's there for like most of your life that you remember like some people don't remember past five and the other kids um like one met the older one like ten met mark when they were five and the other one when they were
so it does make sense and yeah it seems like they're pairing like water off with Mark's parents like it seems like she just doesn't call Mark dad or have the same bond but they have a good relationship um they probably like you know talk to each other or you know there's no hostility is it just because she uh, she doesn't call him dad like that shouldn't be an issue and uh, both Mark and her mom are okay with it and that all, that's all that quite matters the Mark's parents are kind of just you know starting stuff as someone is saying it's kind of pointless and like it seems really immature since they're like the oldest ones of the scenario um, and they're probably like you know interpreting the person's actions totally wrong like they're just spreading rumors and like she's just overhears them gossiping what is this it seems like so stupid so the next one is Emma the asshole for ignoring a crying baby with its mother present in a restaurant and continuing to enjoy my dessert. This one says not the asshole as well. So a few days back I was out for dinner with two friends. Anne is pregnant currently around 17 weeks. Kim is married for three years and currently desperately trying to get pregnant. Because Anne is pregnant and Kim cannot stand the idea of not being pregnant yet and that is all she can think or talk about, though it doesn't interest me much as someone who doesn't plan on ever having children. I happen to have developed a good tolerance for pregnancy slash child related topics because all my friends are either pregnant or parents. During dinner, they spoke only about pregnancies and childbirth, where I was hoping to catch up on other topics. I couldn't uh, get them to talk about anything else, despite politely and subtly trying to change the topic uh, several times, but as I understand that these topics interest them more right now, I very politely contributed to the conversation where I could otherwise let them talk as they pleased. A baby started crying in our vicinity and I kept and kept crying for a while even though the mother tried to calm it down. It didn't seem to hurt in any way, it seemed to be a normal cry for a baby. I noticed it started crying because it was loud and then it didn't notice it anymore. I know it was crying because that's what my friends kept talking about, but I tuned it out, went back to savor my dessert. The crying was like a background noise for me, but my friends know how I'm enjoying my dessert and not contributing to their conversation about how sad they feel for the baby and how it's making their heart ache, as in they were having some sort of physical reaction to the baby crying. I tell them that I didn't eat, don't hear the baby cry anymore. They asked me if I had a hearing issue, so I explained how it was background noise to me. After the first 10 seconds, both of them looked at me in horror and pity. Kim told me that it's good I don't plan on having children because I'm heartless, that my baby would be very unlikely to be my baby, and so that she pities me, and that I'll never know the feeling that they both had. Um, I laughed at their comments because... I thought that Kim wasn't very serious about her comment, and Anne is going through a few hormone changes with her pregnancy and to serve some lenience regarding what she says to me, but they both got mad. Uh, according to them, it wasn't something to laugh about. Neither of these comments bothered me at first, but after I posted about it yesterday, I received a lot of comments telling me they are not good friends. I argued in their favor because of their difficult situations. They're emotionally having a tough time. But after what happened today, I'm not sure anymore. Kim texted me today saying that I need to start showing a little more concern towards crying children if I had to spend time with their future children. When I asked her if my heart should ache every time a strange child cried just because I have a uterus, she called me an asshole. So I'm the asshole for ignoring that crying child 10,000 um, likes. The fact you even have to ask this is wild to me. No, you're not the asshole. Your friends seem really weird though. Uh, the person says, I'm child free. I've never wanted children in the past few years. I've lost a few friends to parenthood and when they tried to exclude me from their friend group activity because of my child free status, these two friends always had my back to have them say these things to me is new. So I thought I'd check if I'm the wrong any way. And people say that you're a much better friend than I am. Yeah, so some people are saying that, um, yeah, they're saying not the asshole. Um, yeah, like, it's not like the baby was a lot. At the first, I thought it was going to be like they were sitting next to them, but it's not even. It's like a random person in the restaurant or something, right? Um, and they're like with their mother. They're not like alone. They're not being abandoned, you know. They're with their mother. You know, sometimes babies just cry and like the mother just wants them to stop because, you know, it draws attention towards them in public. But baby crying is the baby's way of communicating, you know, what they want or need. 
to, etc. So, um, what the friends are saying, it's not really helpful, just like pitying the baby, like, or, oh, it must be so sad, it must be hurting, like, it's just a way of communicating, like, just, just means they're hungry or don't like loud noise or something like that, you know, it's not always like a huge thing. And if anything, you know, you know, them complaining about it isn't really helping, like, if they wanted to help, that's not the way to, like, be doing it, like, if they wanted to help comfort a crying baby, to help the mother, I'm not saying they should do that, but, like, um, you know, asking the mother if there's anything they could do to help, etc., it's not just, like, just pitying them in the restaurant or doing that, is really doing anything at all, you know, it's just, like, it's, like, talking about something like that doesn't really solve anything, and she's, like, you know, I guess, you know, when you're just hearing a noise, you just, like, I'm just holding them out like a baby crying in the, the airplane, you know, if anything, I'd feel more annoyed about that than pitying them, I don't know, but, like, that they're being a bit dramatic, and, um, yeah, like, it doesn't mean, like, you won't, that OP won't care if something happened to the baby, but she shouldn't get, like, an immediate, oh, sad reaction every single time the future children cry or something, you know? It's like, you know, if she was in the room alone with them, it's not like she would ignore them, but it's just a background noise in a restaurant, you know? I don't know, I think I'd, I'd feel the same kind of, but yeah, either way, I think that's gonna be the end of today's video. It seems like a lot of the cases were that the person was not the asshole, um, etc. But, um, it varies depending on whatever, etc. Um, video, all that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I wish I could get a few more videos out of the way, but I don't think I have any time left. I'm gonna do my workout after this, etc. But yeah, I'm not sure now if I should because I've had my smoothie relatively recently, but by the time I get around to do 